Across the United States, more than 33 million people live on land that is sinking, sometimes by centimeters every year, yet almost no one notices until roads crack or pipes fail. Instead of sudden disaster, subsidence quietly drains cities and farms, leaving behind repair bills with no easy fix. If this is happening beneath your feet, what is causing it and how far has it already gone? The movement of land beneath American cities and farmland is not theory. It is measured, mapped, and confirmed by some of the most precise tools in Earth science. Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, INSAR, is at the center of this effort. Satellites operated by NASA's ARIA team and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory compare radar images taken from space weeks or months apart. This method can detect vertical shifts in the ground as small as a few millimeters per year. On INSAR maps, color ramps show the rate of sinking, with yellow for slow movement and red for the fastest. These maps show that subsidence is not limited to a few isolated spots. In cities like Houston, more than 40% of land is dropping by over 5 millimeters a year and 12% is sinking faster than 1 centimeter annually. These rates may sound small, but they accumulate and they are visible in the satellite data. To confirm these patterns, scientists cross-check INSAR results with continuous GPS stations and traditional USGS benchmarks. These ground-based systems track elevation changes at fixed points, often to within a centimeter. In coastal areas, tide gauges add another layer of evidence. They are designed to measure sea level rise, and they also record land sinking beneath the instrument itself, as seen in long-term records from Norfolk, Virginia. Together, these measurements show the same trends and the same locations, increasing confidence that the signals are real and confirmed. The agreement between satellite data, GPS, and tide gauge records leaves little doubt. Wide areas of the United States are subsiding, not just by fractions of an inch, but by measurable accumulating amounts each year. This is not a projection or a model, it is a documented ongoing process, visible in the numbers and confirmed across multiple independent systems. In California's Central Valley, the connection between groundwater pumping and land subsidence is direct and well documented. For decades, farms and towns have relied on groundwater drawn from deep beneath the valley floor. As water is pumped out, the pressure that once supported fine-grained clay layers drops. Without that pressure, the sediments collapse and the land above sinks. Some areas of the San Joaquin Valley have subsided by nearly 9 meters since the 1920s, enough to submerge a three-story building. The California Department of Water Resources tracks these changes with satellite radar and ground surveys, confirming that even today, parts of the valley continue to drop by several centimeters each year. The Delta Mendota Canal, a vital artery for moving water across the region, has been especially hard hit. As the ground beneath the canal sinks unevenly, the original slope designed to let water flow by gravity is lost. In some stretches, this means water must now be lifted uphill, requiring new pumps and costly engineering fixes. The US Bureau of Reclamation and local agencies have launched the Delta Mendota Canal Subsidence Correction Project, with feasibility studies placing the cost of repairs between $200 million and $300 million. These funds are needed just to restore capacity and safety in the worst affected reaches, raising embankments, modifying check structures, and rebuilding sections of canal that no longer function as designed. Once the clay layers in the aquifer system collapse, the land does not rebound, even if groundwater levels recover. This inelastic compaction means the valley's lost elevation is permanent. The repair bill for the Delta Mendota Canal is only one piece of a much larger cost facing California's water infrastructure. Across the Central Valley, water managers now factor subsidence into every major project, knowing that the ground beneath their feet is still settling quietly and irreversibly. In coastal Louisiana, the ground is sinking for reasons that go beyond water extraction. The Mississippi River once delivered massive amounts of sand and mud each spring, replenishing the delta and keeping it above water. 
With levees and upstream dams, the natural cycle has been interrupted. Most of the river sediment now gets trapped far upstream, leaving the wetlands and delta plain starved of new material. As a result, the soft waterlogged sediments beneath the surface continue to compact under their own weight with no fresh deposits to offset the loss. Engineers at Louisiana Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority CPRA, are tasked with keeping track of this quiet transformation. They use regular levee crest surveys and satellite-based measurements to document drops in land elevation. In many parts of the delta, subsidence rates of 5 to 10 millimeters per year are now the norm. When combined with global sea level rise, the effective loss of elevation, the margin between levee tops and floodwaters can reach 8 to 14 millimeters each year. Over a typical 30-year span, that means a hurricane levee can lose about a foot of protective height if it is not raised, simply because the ground beneath it is settling and the water outside is rising. C. P. R. A. Records show many levees in Plaquemines Parish and around New Orleans have already required multiple lifts since their original construction. Wetland loss maps reveal the consequences. As the land sinks and marshes drown, open water steadily replaces once protected habitat. For engineers and planners, the challenge is constant. They must schedule levee raises and restoration projects on a timeline dictated not by dramatic disasters, but by the slow, relentless compaction of a delta that no longer receives the sediment it needs to stay afloat. Post-glacial isostatic adjustment is one of the most persistent forces reshaping the ground along the east coast and parts of the Midwest. As the massive ice sheets of the last ice age melted, land that had been pressed down in the north began to rebound upward. At the same time, the foreborge, the crust pushed up just south of the ice, has slowly collapsed for thousands of years. Today, places like Norfolk, Virginia, sit atop this sinking foreborge. Tide gauge records from Norfolk show a steady downward trend, with the land itself dropping 1 to 3 millimeters a year, even before accounting for sea level rise. Peltier's models, widely used in earth science, map these gradients across the Atlantic seaboard, confirming that post-glacial isostatic adjustment is not a relic of the past, but an active process still shaping communities. In urban areas, subsidence is not only a product of geology, but also of policy. Houston, for example, has faced some of the highest rates of land sinking in the country, with more than 40% of its land area sinking at rates greater than 5 mm per year. In response, the Harris-Galveston Subsidence District was created to manage groundwater extraction. Since 2013, strict caps have limited groundwater use to 10-20% to of total supply in most of the district, enforced by a system of permits and fees. These regulatory plans, called groundwater reduction plans, have slowed the rate of sinking in many monitored zones, confirmed by satellite and GPS data. Yet the effectiveness of these measures depends on continued oversight and comprehensive monitoring. While the district's boundaries cover much of the Houston region, areas outside its reach and activities like oil and gas extraction remain less regulated, leaving gaps in the effort to halt subsidence. The interplay between deep geologic processes and modern water management means that both natural history and human decisions are shaping the ground beneath American cities. Cracked pavement, buckled sidewalks, and sheared water mains signal the physical limits of what subsidence can do to a city's infrastructure. Municipal engineers in Houston and in California's Central Valley now treat three centimeters of differential settlement, the distance of a single finger, as enough to break underground pipes. These breaks often appear with no warning, splitting joints or tilting manholes, and repairs can only chase the damage as it migrates with the ground. In the San Joaquin Valley, repeated surveys along the Delta Mendota Canal show that even small vertical drops, just a few centimeters per year, can flatten or reverse the canal's slope. Where gravity once moved water efficiently, Pumps now must lift it uphill, adding both cost and complexity. The US Bureau of Reclamation's correction project for the Delta Mendoza Canal is priced at $200 million to $300 million just to restore capacity and safety along the most affected reaches. 
Drainage systems face similar limits. In Houston, subsidence has forced water agencies to retrofit pump stations and storm sewers after slopes reversed in low-lying neighborhoods. These interventions are expensive, and they only slow new damage. Once the ground has compacted, the lost elevation is permanent. Even managed aquifer recharge, which raises groundwater levels, can halt further compaction, but it cannot recover what is already sunk. Monitoring networks now drive maintenance schedules and design choices, but every repair is a reminder that the ground itself is moving beyond what engineering can fully control. For millions living above these quiet shifts, the evidence is written in the infrastructure, in the cracks and offsets, and in the unyielding fact that some damage cannot be undone. Today, over 30 million Americans live atop sinking ground, often without warning. As more infrastructure quietly warps and fails, subsidence transforms from an invisible process into an urgent daily challenge. The ground beneath us is not as permanent as we once assumed. Thanks for watching.